All right, we're back up. Um, just appreciative of uh, the fact that our department has already had a, an opportunity to speak to this, uh, to Amber. Um, the amount of work that they already have on their plates is tremendous. And uh, to have to respond to so many things on a daily basis, plus try and find funding uh, and maintain uh, the funding and the reporting that's associated with it is a very difficult task. Uh, so my hope is that um, they will find a lot of relief with this new position and also simultaneously uh, take some of the burden off the taxpayers as well. I'm also equally impressed with the wastewater uh, treatment facility. When I first toured that, it really blew my mind that, that something of that quality and magnitude can exist and, and be so tucked away in our town. Um, and it also made me think of how important it might be to highlight uh, each one of the departments and what they actually do on a daily basis. Um, we're talking about um, potentially increasing our uh, agreement with um, Design Lab in our budget. And perhaps this is something that can be addressed with them of doing a video series, uh, really highlighting the wonderful work that all of our departments do um, so that people can in the community can actually see firsthand um, the amount of work and effort that goes into their jobs and uh, how they continuously do things that might not be as visible um, to the average person in the public. So just a big thank you to everyone uh, working for the town. And with that, any public comments on the manager support? Matt? Susan D'Alessandro with a general assistance thought I'd be available. Also such amazing reports from the library reflecting the great work they do on so many levels, which is truly the heartbeat of the community. There are so many great things happening under Diana App's direction. Thank you, Sue. Any other public comment on the manager's report? Diana? Um, I just wanted to thank Susan and all the counselors um, for their comments about the report and to uh, Mr. Manager for including it. I'm really looking forward to having increased lines of communication between the library and the town going forward. And I think this is a great platform to get that started. So thank you so much. Thank you, Diana. Any other public comment? And seeing none, um, is there any interest of the council of doing a five or 10 minute recess? Just wanna throw it out there. And seeing no interest, all righty. Thought how to ask. 7.34, all right. Um, moving to unfinished business. Uh, Councilor Prey, if I could ever read order number 40, 2022, please. Uh, Mr. Chairman, that was tabled unassigned. Not, so it stays on the table unless somebody raises to bring it up by, by procedure. All righty, how do you feel about reading order number 77, 2022? How do I feel about it? I'll do it. Right. Order number 77 2022, providing for execution of the town warrant for April 28th. 2022, it is ordered that the town warrant for April 28, 2022, in the amount of $177,640.15, be hereby be approved. Second. Motion by Councilor Cray, seconded by Council Medora. Uh, Council comment, heavy hitters. Uh, Got to get the right one here, just to make sure that I'm giving you the right big hitters on it. Um, $2,500 for Central Maine Pyrotechnics for the 4th of July, 50% down payment, uh, $2,710.20 for Franklin Paint uh, for Public Works Painting for uh, lines and parking spaces and so forth, $2,725 to Halley Ward which is uh, the CDBG relative work, um, $18,324.78 to Harris Computer System 
for IT services, $7,311.33 to Hoya Tanner Associates dealing with the airport master plan, $100,651 to the Millinock Insurance Agency, $4,504.72 to the Municipal Review Committee, that's the tipping fees for trash, $4,031.04 to Preble Oil Company, $15,000 to Twin Pine, Twin Pine Snowmobile Club, that's grooming, that's passed through money from the state, uh, $10,528.31 for person power. Page one or two, that's, pay, that's it. Thank you, Councilor Bray. Any other council comment? Councilor Bragdon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I just wanna point out under here, the town hall streaming, that's $200. Um, with the direction that the manager and myself are taking, we, we will be having a huge savings that you will no longer see this on there. Um, the streaming service that we plan on moving to is completely free and will access more people. So that, that charge for $200 will eventually go away. Thank you, Councilor Bryden. Any other council comment? Seeing none, that is a public. Also seeing none, back to the council. All those in favor, Councilor McEwen? Aye. Councilor Palatier. Aye. Councilor Cray, your mic's on already. Aye. Councilor Vanforth. Aye. Chair Goley, aye. Councilor Medor. Aye. Councilor Bragdon. Aye. Order passes 7 0. And uh, Councilor Cray, I'll go right back to you on order number 78, 2022, please. Order number 78 2022, providing for execution of the wastewater warrant for April 28, 2022. It is ordered that the wastewater warrant for April 28, 2022, in the amount of $44,934.06, is hereby approved. Second. Motion by Councillor Price, seconded by Councillor Medor. Heavy hitters? Uh, Mr. Chairman, heavy hitters is $3,419.59 to CMD Central Main uh, Diesel Power System for a generator. Uh, which was rental, uh, $25,817 uh, to the Milnock Insurance Agency, $2,970 to Pierce Atwood, dealing with tribal jurisdiction, Matt Manahan uh, at that uh, law firm, and $7,579.22 to Burson Power. Thank you, Councilor Prey. Any other council comment? Mr. Chairman, Council Pray. I would just note that uh, I, I believe that that uh, uh, I'd be interested in hearing from uh, Jim in reference to the generator uh, paid uh, thirty-five hundred, a little bit under thirty-five hundred. It cost about fifteen thousand for a forty k. Fire chief Patelis, because they have one on wheels out there, but. Uh, uh, I think it would be to the advantageous for the town to consider having a mobile generator uh, around 40K uh, or recommendations from Public Works or wastewater in reference to having 150, 100, 100K generator. That would be about uh, somewhere around yeah. 50,000. But, uh, but I do think it would be advantageous. Thank you, Councilor Prey. That was some good sign language going on there. In the budget. Mr. Manager? Uh, I am now unmuted. That is the generator we were speaking of um, in the manager's report. Um, we spoke about this, this, this recent um, malfunction with the generator at the pump station um, up in the same property as the Chamber of Commerce Visitor Center. Um, that was the generator that malfunctioned. A, each pump station has a generator in it. Um, that was the generator that malfunctioned and that was the reason we had to um, get the rental um, and the replacement for that in this market is roughly $170,000. Uh, so that is the generator in question that um, the community initiatives director is also looking for funding to purchase for the town of Milwaukee. We believe there are some opportunities in uh, ARPA funding, not locally, um, and in FEMA funding. Thank you, Mr. Manager. Any other council comments? 
Seeing none, that of the public. Also seeing none, back to the council. All those in favor, Councilor Bragdon. Aye. Councilor Medora. Aye. Councilor Pelletier. Councilor Pelletier. Aye. Councilor McEwen. Aye. Chair Goley, bye. Councilor Danforth. Aye. Councilor, <laughs> Councilor Prey. Aye. Right. You only get one vote, Councilor Pelletier. Yeah. All right. And uh, back to you, Councilor Pelletier, if I could have you read order number 79, 2022, please. Certainly, order number 79-2022, providing for approval of an application for a victory license for Subway. It is ordered that the attached application for a victory license is hereby approved for Bruce McLean, 181 Main Avenue, Millinocket, doing business as Subway, 805 Central Street, Millinocket. Second. Second. Motion by Councillor Peltier, seconded by Councillor Bride in discussion of the council. Seeing none, that of the public. Also seeing none, back to the council. All in favor, Councillor Prey. Aye. Councillor Danforth. Aye. Chair Goli, bye. Councillor Medor. Abstain. And Councillor Bragdon. Aye. Councillor McEwen. Aye. Councillor Peltier. Aye. Order passes 601. And uh, Councillor Braden, if I could have read order number 80, 2022, please. Order number 80, 2022, providing for approval of an application for a particular license for Hillcraft Golf Club. <coughs> it is ordered that the attached application for a particular license is hereby approved for Hillcrest Golf Club, one golf course road, Millinocket doing business as Hillcrest Golf Course, one golf course road, Millinocket. Second. Motion by Councillor Braden, seconded by Councillor Major. Discussion of the Council. Seeing none, that of the public. Also seeing none, back to the council. All those in favor, Councilor Pelletier, start with you. I see you trying to say aye. aye. <laughs> Councilor McEwen. Aye. Councilor Pray. Aye. Councilor Danforth. Aye. Chair Billy Bye. Councilor Medor. Aye. Councilor Bragdon. Aye. Councilor Pelletier, I think when you move your papers, it uh, takes out your eye sound, just so you're aware of that. Maybe try and say aye before you move your papers around. Might help. Council Medora, order number, can you read order number 81, 2022, please? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Order 81 2022, providing for approval of an application for an entertainment license for Hillcrest Golf Club. It is ordered that the attached application for an entertainment license be hereby approved for Hillcrest Golf Club, one golf course road, Millinocket, doing business as Hillcrest Golf Course, one golf course road, Millinocket. Second. Motion by Council Medora, seconded by Council Danforth. Discussion of the Council. Seeing none, that of the public. Also seeing none, back to the council. All those in favor, Councillor Medor. Aye. Councillor Bragdon. Aye. Councillor McEwen. Aye. Councillor Pelletier. No, still. Uh... Aye. Here we go, Councillor Prey. Aye. <laughs> Councillor Danforth. Aye. And Chair Gulley, bye. Order passes 7 0. Uh, Councillor McEwen, could I have read order number 82, 2022, please? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Order number 82-2022, providing for approval of an application for an entertainment license for Boreal Theater. It is ordered that the attached application for an entertainment license is hereby approved for Brandy D. Jackson, Millinocket, doing business as Boreal Theater, 215 Penobscot Avenue, Millinocket. <clears throat> Motion by Councilor McEwen, seconded by Councilor Medora. Discussion of the Council? Mr. Chairman. Councilor Medor. Yeah, I just look forward to uh, the establishment opening up. I think it's uh, going to be a great addition to Main Street. Also, my it's my understanding that it also is part of a funding source that helps out with uh, one of our recovery uh, homes for uh, the area. So uh, I think all around, it's a great win for the town of Millinocket, and I look forward to it operating and moving forward. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Medor. 100% agreed. Any other council comment? Seeing none, that of the public. Also seeing none, back to the council. All those in favor, Councilor Bragdon. Aye. Councilor Medor. Aye. Chair Goley, bye. Councilor Danforth. Aye. Councilor Prey. Yes. Sorry? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Councilor Pelletier. 
Aye. Councillor McEwen. Aye. Order, pass Order passes 7 0. Some of us may have benefited from that five or 10 minute break. <laughs> Councilor Danforth, can I have you read order number 83 2022, please? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Order number 83 2022, providing for approval of agreement with the town of East Millinocket to provide recreation services to the town of Millinocket. It is ordered that the Millinocket Town Council grants approval to enter into an agreement with the town of East Millinocket to provide management services for the Millinocket Recreation Department with said agreement to be effective from July 1st, 2022 and remain in effect for a period of one year until June 30th, 2023 at a contracted cost of $39,803. Second. Question by Councilor Danforth, seconded by Councilor Medor. Um, I do want to pose something to the council. It may not be this specific order itself that uh, it needs to be addressed, but it has been quite some time since I feel the community and the council has really um, taken a moment to analyze and talk about the future of the recreation department as a whole. I know we have a commission that focuses on that, uh, but I know that uh, many members of the public have been asking questions about where the department's going, um, and basically what the vision is for the next five, 10 years. Um, again, it, it may not necessarily have to pertain to this order, but I think it would be beneficial for us to maybe uh, have the commission meet with us at some point to discuss uh, what their goals are, what they've been talking about, and also to get some public input uh, on these great resources that we have. Um, we have a tremendous amount of facilities and that's usually the huge, you know, the biggest upfront cost to having a department like this, having a swimming pool that's clearly state of the art, having the rec uh, fields and all the parks around the town. Um, I think we need to look at things like programming and how these, how these uh, spaces can be utilized uh, for all different ages um, and potentially even look at ARPA funds to try and cover some programming that might be um, beneficial to the community, um, given that it's outdoor spaces overall. And uh, I think probably connects and correlates more with COVID funds than a lot of the other things that have been proposed. Uh, those are just some thoughts, certainly open to feedback from other councilors. Councilor Danforth. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, I, I'm in agreement that I would uh, like to be able to think about the future for like with the rec department and what we might be able to start putting back in the budget. Um, I think I've talked about this before um, and we talk about prevention for substance use disorder um, and um, youth positive youth development is a prevention strategy. And so we need to look at what we have in our community already that we can utilize um, to these positive experiences for our youth. Um, we know putting adults, um, one positive adult role model in the life of a child who doesn't have a, a positive role model can make a huge difference, um, life-changing difference. So I think we need to look um, just a little more comprehensively. Uh, I don't wanna stop anything that's already going on, but I would like to perhaps um, the role of the Rec Commission, I've been on it before, it's really just an advisory um, sort of ears to the community and provide um, feedback to the um, to the rec um, director and that sort of thing. Maybe it needs to do a little visioning, you know, and, and just, just to be thinking more broadly. So yeah, I don't want to halt anything or, or impede anything that's already happening, but as a town, I'd like for us to just look at what is our vision around recreation, youth. And it doesn't have to just be youth because the recreation department, you know, it, it, it's across a lifespan. So thank you. Thank you, Councilor Danforth. Any other council comments? Councilor Bragdon? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm reading one of the comments that was made by um, a citizen in town, and I have to agree with them, and I'd like to be educated a little bit more because I don't know enough. I haven't been on the council long enough to know this. Um, I was just in high school when, or middle school when things changed over to a consolidated. Um, when we went to a consolidated department, did how many things were lost? Because um, I hear a lot in the public people say that since we consolidated the rec department, we lost a ton of programming. Is that completely true or is this due to another reason that has no correlation with, uh, with consolidating? I don't think that's a proper way to frame it. I think um, Councilor Medora could probably speak to it better than I can. I have 
been involved with recreation now for the past 40 plus years in town of Millinocket, and I can tell you that we have not lost programs. Uh, we have changed how the programs are, in, are done. Uh, yes, we've had to consolidate because obviously, especially in youth programs where we've lost numbers of children as far as being able to participate. Uh, so we brought, uh, we've consolidated with our, our neighboring communities in order to keep programs alive, for instance, Little League Baseball, uh, Little Giant Football, uh, some Junior Pro Basketball, though Junior Pro Basketball right now is self-sufficient within town, but still we do some cross uh, work with other communities. Uh, we have uh, still have, we, we, about the only thing I think that basically I can point to definitely that we have lost in a way is we don't have the Easter egg hunt anymore. Uh, but I mean, as far as the programs that we did have, uh, the, the basics, uh, matter of fact, we've added programs. Uh, uh, we've added softball uh, on the uh, equivalency for a, uh, a little league level for girls. Uh, we have field hockey. Uh, we have, we, we've increased our programming. Uh, it's, it may not be everything for everybody yet, but I think Councilor Danforth is right. I think we need to go ahead and look at the, the spectrum. Uh, some of the things we have lost because we haven't been able to entertain so much uh, co-ed softball, obviously, because we haven't had teams up for a while. And of course, years and years ago, because we had tremendous population, we had men's league recreational basketball. We had, uh, we had men's league softball. We had volleyball leagues that took place, we, these, but these are numbers games. They have nothing to do with consolidating or anything else. These have only to do with the fact that we don't have the bodies because of loss of, of uh, population and the age of our communities. Instead of running around a volleyball court, you may have to go ahead and have a bocce ball game or something, or instead of going ahead and playing, you know, uh, co-ed softball, you may have to go ahead and revert down to pickleball or something. But I mean, it is something that necessarily happens, but we still have a pool, we still have swimming lessons, we still have all that stuff. So the, the fact that I hear this occasionally in the community of how much we've lost in recreation, and we have not really. What we have had is a change in direction because of lack of participation, because we don't have the numbers. Can I ask a follow-up question, please? So the trips that were originally organized for the summer for the students that were in Granite Street and the middle schoolers that went to Southern Maine, um, some, some of them went to like water parks and such, were those not organized through the rec department? Because I remember participating in them and my brother participating in them. And I was always told that those were rec department programs that were lost due to funding. Uh, I would much rather have this conversation with the rec director present to be able to answer the uh, uh, answer these questions. Thank you, Mr. Manager. Any other council comment? Council Medor? And as Councilor Danforth pointed out, the, the rec commission that we have is an advisory board to the uh, head of recreation, the recreation director. But I certainly would entertain a, a sit down with them to discuss uh, their thoughts and the thoughts of, and have it be an open forum for members of the public to be able to also talk to the recreation commission because I can't remember honestly, the last time the commission itself sat down with either the council or the public to have that discussion. So I think it's, it's past time, and I think it would be a good opportunity to do that somewhere in the near future here, especially with summer programs coming around. The other program that is also, we may have lost trips out of town to see movies, but we're feeding children. And recreation is playing a major role in cooperation with the school department to feed lunches to children in the summertime who otherwise wouldn't have that opportunity. So. It, it, there may be some trade-offs and funding of how you do things or programs that are offered, but certainly one of the big things that we've gained is being able to provide free lunches to children in the community 
during the summer months that otherwise might uh, have that opportunity once school ends. Thank you, Councilor Medora. Thank you, Councilor Peltier. Yeah, maybe it's longer than 40 years ago or uh, just a change in direction and financing of the rec department. But as a child, I used to remember uh, elementary school students being able to go to the, the playgrounds and there were programs uh, run by the rec department for crafts and uh, activities at the playgrounds, you know, all around town, not just one particular place. You know, that's that's one thing I, I think it, it would still be uh, part of the. You muted yourself, Louie. Yeah, I was done. You didn't hear anything? <laughs> Maybe I'll just throw my phone. <laughs> You're hitting the mute button a little early there. Councilor Prey. Mr. Chairman, I was glad to hear Louie mention those old programs. Um, my late wife was the recreational director at the Hillcrest Playground, and they st she started the Swabbies. Now, I don't know, maybe Louie might be old enough to remember Swabbies, which was a girls' softball league that they had. And uh, she initiated that. And uh, I think the recreation director at the time was a guy by the name of Delahanty. I've heard of that guy. Might be uh, Peter might, uh, anyway, Peter's uh, grandfather, uh, the manager's grandfather. but. Uh, they had a lot of programs back in, in those days, but again, that was because of the size of the population and what the town could afford. Uh, and we had a benefactor that paid for most of the uniforms and anything else that came to all of these kids. Uh, and it, but I agree, getting the rec uh, commission together uh, with councils, let's have them start initiate the planning and have it have something presented to the council to look at because we're, we're going to end up either funding it or trying to um, see how we can make it grow. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Prey. Any other council comments? And just noting, we did receive uh, results from a survey that went out regarding a lot of what we're talking about right now that could be helpful in that discussion on what people are looking forward to uh, or looking for using in our community. Uh, any public comment on this, Matt? I know there's a lot of Comments? Sharon Decker, can the public take part in the future agreement or not to agree? We are having a consolidated rec department with having a consolidated rec department. We have lost a lot of acti activities compared to when it wasn't consolidated. Susan D'Alessandro, thank you very much, Chairman Glee, for that suggestion. Additional programs are very much needed. And Councilor Danforth's, Danforth's point about prevention and commitments and comments. Uh, Sharon Decker, we lost arts, theater, soccer, flag, football, and music. Susan D'Alessandro said we need more than just sports. Sharon Decker finished up by saying, yes, they had theater, music band, and vocal, oh, and also dance. Thank you for those comments. Those are certainly things that should be raised when we meet as a full group uh, so that your thoughts can be heard fully amongst uh, the Rec Commission and the director as well. Any other public comments? And seeing none, back to the council. All those in favor, Councilor McEwen? Aye. Councilor Pelletier? Aye. Councilor Pelletier? Aye. Councilor Bray? Aye. Councilor Danforth? Aye. Chair Gulley, bye. Councilor Medor? Aye. Councilor Bragdon? Aye. Order passes 7 0. Councilor Prey, if I could have read order number 84-2022, Biden for acceptance of line striking bill. It is ordered that the Milwaukee Town Council accept a bit of $8,000 from Lucas Striping LLC to paint the line marking of our main run streets. The work will be completed for July 1st, 2022, and the funds will come from the summer road budget, FY 2022-0407-2803, paint and supply line. Two bidders replied, the prices are as follows. One, Lucas Striping LLC, 8,000. Two, K5 Corporation, $9,500. Note, it's recommended the Public Works Director to accept the low bid of 8,000 from Lucas Striping LLC as they meet all specifications according to the 
manual and uniform traffic control devices and has painted roads satisfactory for the town of Milwaukee in the past. Second. Motion by Councilor Cray, second by Councilor Medora, discussion of the council. Seeing none, that of the public. Also seeing none, back to the council. All those in favor, Councilor Bragdon. Aye. Aye. Councilor Medora. Aye. Chair Gulley, bye. Councilor Danforth. Aye. Councilor Cray with his mic already on and then turn it off and then turn it Aye. off. Aye. <laughs> Councilor Pelletier. That was an aye. Councilor McEwen. Aye. Aye. Hi. <laughs> All right. Our request is seven zero. Noting that we moved uh, order number eighty five out of order already. Uh, Councilor Braddon, can I have you read order number eighty six, twenty twenty two, please? Order number eighty six, twenty twenty two, providing for the adoption of the airport leasing policy, whereas the leasing of the airport land or facilities may provide revenue to the town of Milwaukee, and whereas the town has no existing policy for the leasing of airport land or facilities. Is therefore ordered that the attached airport leasing policy be adopted by the town of Milwaukee. Motion by Councilor Bragdon, seconded by Councilor Medor. Uh, just noting that I did submit this as a uh, um, recommendation as a member of the public. I won't be voting on this one. Um, any council comment? Mr. Chairman. Councilor Medor? Yes. Um, as reading through this, um, I won't be supporting this. Uh, mainly because of the fact that uh, I do not care for the wording where uh, the uh, airport manager and town manager without council approval. Uh, no, I, this is a uh, department and land and area owned by the town of Millinocket and under the purview of the council. So I will not support not having the council involved when it comes to creating leases or uh, renting space out there, I do not believe that it is in the best interest. And I think it sets a bad precedent. I will not support it. Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councilor Dr. Cray. Mr. Chairman, I was intending to make a motion to the effect of what Councilor Medor just spoke in reference to was that the uh, uh, any such leasing uh, would be would require council approval and striking the uh, in reference to uh, where I see in the hangar space that that the uh, proposed construction approved by the town code enforcement officer um, and such would all have to still come back to the council. So. Thank you, Councilor Prey. And just noting. Um, the only portion in here that did not require council approval was anything, an event under three days. Um, I was looking at a model similar to Peddler's Hill, where we as a council do not offer permits for three day uh, Peddler Hill permits. Anything beyond that, however, would have to be approved by the councils how it's written. Councilor Medor. Uh, again, this, this has to do. I mean, realize there is a there is a um, any lease for facility longer than three days must be presented to and approved to the council. I believe that any leasing of that facility up there whatsoever, whether it be one day. I mean, we've had the truck pull up there that we've had to go ahead and uh, give permission for, uh, and that was a one day event. Uh, these things are already in place. The precedent is already set. I don't believe there needs to be any change where we have to give, uh, where the council uh, usurps their authority to give permission to uh, use the facility. Uh, that should be something. I mean, there's nothing that's going to be any pressing that somebody has to have uh, before the next council meeting or something that the council can't review and give approval for as a whole body. So I, again, I won't be supporting this. Thank you, Council Medora, Council Peltier. Well, I hope you can hear me. My little green light isn't on on my, uh... can you hear me? Yes, you're just a little delayed. Hello, there we go. Can you hear me now? Oh, I guess, huh? Uh, I, I'll support this uh, order. I, I have total faith in the uh, salaried employee that runs the airport, but, uh, and any person that we would hire 
to do that job would uh, have enough uh, sense to choose any event less than three days long be suitable for the space. Uh, I, I think it's fine the way. Thank you, Councilor Caltier. Any other council comment? Councilor Bryden? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just, you know, bouncing off Councilor Pelletier, I agree. I don't think this needs to be micromanaged by us. Um, I think the uh, the manager and whoever else involved have um, have the should have the authority to do this. I don't think that this is something we should look over after every single time somebody wants to do something up there. Um, I am also in favor of this order. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Braden. Any other council comment? Seeing none, that of the public. Mary Alice. Nine minute man drive. I guess, I mean, I agree with what Councilor Medor is saying. However, if there is a tendency to um, pass this responsibility for three days over to the town, my recommendation would be that the town manager has the ultimate approval on what happens. He, you know, we all, the employees all report to the town manager, and ultimately it would be his responsibility to make sure the proper things are taken into consideration and for him to set the pro process procedure on how that would work within the departments. Thank you, Mary Alice. Jeff? Jeff Campbell, airport manager. I would agree wholeheartedly with what the treasurer just said. Anything that I would do that would constitute an event, a one day, three day, whatever, would certainly be discussed with the manager. Thank you, Jeff. Any other public comment? Yes. Any of these leasing situations that we're talking about that could potentially happen. Um, our chief concern here is the grant assurances where we take grant money for um, infrastructure stuff. So that is my primary concern, safety and or grant assurances. And those are looked at. Thank you, Jeff. Seeing no other public comment, back to the council. Councilor Gray. Mr. Chairman, um, I'm going to make a comment and I hope that somebody responds to it. And then I'd like to table this just to tell you in advance. My question or comment is reference to uh, we don't have a policy in reference to requirement of insurances or anything else uh, written. Now, obviously, that could be determined. But we have not yet expressed an outline that. Uh, that the manager could have this, but require anybody that's leasing or renting uh, space on the airport would have to have insurance that would cover their event or anything like that. Um, and so I uh, am a little nervous about uh, granting this uh, as written, uh, though it's been suggested and recommended uh, uh, of a couple of changes, which the airport manager has agreed to put one of those changes that came from the treasurer. Um, and instead of this, trying to work this out where it's agreeable to all parties. I wish somebody would make the motion to table it unless people want to comment in reference to my remarks. Thank you, Councilor Gray. Any council comment? Councilor Danforth. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I guess I would just ask maybe the manager, is there an events policy? Would, is there some way to include in here that we would follow an events policy that's already in place? Is there such a thing? I believe this would be a, um, a blend of our independent contracting uh, policy and our uh, parks, uh, park, park rental policy within the, uh, you know, to, to rent, for example, Veterans Park or uh, Randall Park over on um, Congress Street. Uh, you need to provide proof of insurance as, as part of the step there um, or pay additional fees, if I remember correctly. Um, and it, any outside contractor that you know performs work on uh, property owned by the town of Milwaukee needs to provide proof of um, liability insurance as well. I don't, I don't know specifically if there's one addressing that uh, at the airport, but I think it could be covered under both of those. Yeah. So um, 
hearing your response, I would be in favor of tabling it until we had some other language that was more inclusive. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Ackworth. Councilor Bragdon. Oversight on my part, there was a public comment. Um, Susan D. Alessandro said, I agree with it as written. Thank you, Susan. And Jeff, did you have something else to add? We have leases out there at this time for uh, hangar space and everything else, and it's always uh, included that we have insurance. All the buildings that we lease are insured. The truck pull event was insured. That that's just an item that goes without saying. Um, I realize it probably should be written, but um, nothing would happen without um, liability insurance. Thank you, Jeff. And uh, just noting one line in here: um, if the lessee requires other permitting for town, county, state, or federal law, including but not limited to a victualler or entertainment license, the lessee must show proof of proper licensing and/or approvals before being granted event space. So speaking to that specifically, it does include that. Councilor Peltier. Yes, uh, I, I think it's fine to pass it the way it is. If we want to, uh, if we want to address uh, events and, you know, like we, we probably should have a policy that covers Townwide departments on holding events in, in their uh, departments or whatever's going on that covers these questions that have been brought up. They don't necessarily need to uh, pull this up for uh, that to happen. Thank you, Councilor Peltier. Councilor Pray. Mr. Chairman, I was going to move that on. Uh, um, that we add a line that would require um, all leases would have to, uh, we have this one under events, but I reference to all three of the categories of events, facilities and land, that we have a category that require them to have the proper licenses um, and insurance before being granted the event space. Where did you want that red council? Well, I would suspect since I'm including all three events at the end of three, we'd have um, four that would state um, that uh, the leases, uh, that uh, uh, all leases must show proof of proper licensing, insurance, uh, before being granted event space, period. Motion by Councilor Cray, seeking a second. Okay. And there is no- Second. <laughs> Motion by Councilor Cray, second. I second it. Councilor Peltier with that delay there. Uh, discussion of the council on the motion, Councilor Danforth. So I- I agree with the addition, but it seems like we need to strike on the very first line, um, the airport manager, and you didn't say the town manager may lease land, based on what we heard from the um, airport manager. We're taking the airport manager out of the decision. It's the town manager's ultimate decision. Is that what we determined? You're welcome to, uh, or Councilor Peltier is welcome to withdraw his second if Councilor Prey would be interested in potentially rereading it with that change your mic's off if council yeah, party is uh i move the no, side of the table <laughs> it's it's not uh second motion by council I'll, Price. I'll withdraw my second for that the tables uh, motions are <laughs> Motion by Councilor Pray to table the second, seconded by Councilor McEwen. All those in favor, Councilor McEwen. Councilor Pelletier. I'm at a loss for what's going on here. There is a motion by Councilor Pray to table the second. I'm a... Can you repeat that, please? Oh. Aye. All right. Aye. 
Aye. Aye. <laughs> Councilor Danforth. Aye. Chair Goley, the same. Councilor Medor. Aye. Councilor Bragdon. Nay. Woo. All right. The uh, tabling passed 5 1 1. Any further discussion of the council? Councilor Medor. May I ask one question? Why is this necessary? That's, you know, the crux of this is anybody who's wanted to do anything at the airport has always come in front of the council, whether it be a truck pull, a fly in, whatever, and gotten the council approval. Why is this necessary? What is, what is the, other than the fact that uh, someone wants to lease space out there for growing, why is this necessary? Any other council comments? I will call on myself as a public member. Sure. You, you, you didn't appoint it. Yeah, I know. Chair. Okay. Do you, can I appoint a pro tem chair? Is there any other issues? I don't think we really don't need it. Okay. I just want to make sure. We need it. Thank you. You're Steve Goley made High Street. I seem to recall at the last council meeting when I was here as a member of the public that when I tried leasing a space of the land to grow some grapes, uh, that that basically was uh, tabled until a policy was created. Therefore, a policy is now on the agenda. And now there's a question as to why that policy is on an agenda. So I am also confused as a member of the public. I certainly would have no issue with there being a policy. I think it would make sense to have something clear and concise for anyone expressing interest in the site, noting that I don't think a single person in the public has been interested in leasing a space of that airport since it was built a very long time ago. That's just my personal feeling on that. In the absence of a chair, I'll take the advantage of, uh, 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 you know, the reason a lot of this is happening is because times have changed. We used to do a lot of things without going through all the procedures that has, that has to happen today. We used to let a lot of things happen with insurance, and then all of a sudden people started suing, suing town, suing uh, departments, and so forth. Uh, I just see that, that it's a different uh, period of time that we're dealing with some of these things and some of us are trying to pr protect the town. Some of you might think that it's not necessary to do that or that, that it's over protection. I can understand uh, missing the old days, but I'm awful cautious nowadays, particularly saying having an event, not making sure that we have insurances and so forth. We don't know who's going to come into that event might happen. Uh, I'd like to take that extra precaution personally as an individual on this council representing the rest of this town. Thank you, Councilor Prey. Any other council comment? Councilor Medora? And I have no problem with making sure we have insurances and making sure that there's situations. We always have. When someone has come in, we've always made sure that all the insurances and everything are there. It's I, I just don't, this is not necessary. This just usurps the council's ability to, to manage its own uh, town property uh, and the way that it has worked for all this time. Uh, as far as coming in front of the council to look for, you know, to get uh, a piece of land to, to grow grapes, to be honest with you, I have no problem with it. I really don't. I, I don't have a problem with it. I thought it was going to be reintroduced. I, I know that I thought there were questions, but I thought it was going to be brought back up and it was going to be reintroduced uh, for consideration. Uh, I don't think we have to do an entire uh, policy for a misunderstanding. I, I don't, and, I, and I'm sorry that it happened, but I don't think this is necessary. And I just don't understand why I, I if, if, your request wants to be brought back up. 
I'll certainly consider it. I, I have no problem with it. I, I just don't think this is necessary to do that. And with that, I'll say thank you. Thank you, Council Medora. Any other council comments? Seeing none, that of the public. Also seeing none, back to the council. All those in favor, Councilor Pelletier. Hi. Councilor McEwen. Couldn't hear Nay. that. Nay. Nay. Councilor Bragdon. Aye. Councilor Prey. Aye. Councilor Danforth. Aye. Councilor Medor. Nay. And Chair Goliath abstain. The order passes 4 2 1. And moving on to order number 87, 2022. Councilor Medor, can I have you read that, please? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Let's try that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Order number 87 2022, providing for acceptance of airport terminal bid. Whereas the Sustainability Committee, Committee received three bids for the airport terminal RFP and the following two were considered qualified bids. One, Arcadia Des Design Works for 243,300 and pardon me if I mispronounce this one, Avist, Avist, Avist uh, Engineering for 136,000. And whereas uh, Acadia Design Works bid was selected by the Sustainability Committee, and whereas the Northern Border Regional Commission grant, the NBRC, will cover 80% of the total cost and will provide a notice to proceed once the agreement with the updated numbers is submitted and funds are identified from local match or local match. It is therefore ordered that the Town Council accept the bid from Acadia Design Works for $243,300 and authorizes the town manager to sign any additional agreements to complete the NBRC grant for the airport terminal engineering and design phase. It is further ordered that $48,660 will be held in the undesignated fund balance for the 20% local match for said project. Second. Motion by Councilor Medora, seconded by Councilor Bragdon. Discussion of the council, Councilor Prey. Mr. Chairman, um, obviously the Sustainability Committee looked at this and has made the recommendation, but could you uh, share with me, maybe the council as a whole, uh, what the difference between the two bids were and why uh, the, it was chosen to go with the higher bid? Sure, if you go to page three and four, you'll see how they were scored under different categories. Um, everyone voted fairly uniformly, so I could probably confidently uh, speak to why. Um, the point is pretty, uh, for the first one in price, is pretty um, obvious, I think. Avius had a lower score, so they got a higher uh, point uh, than Arcadia Design Works did. Uh, under capacity, um, Arcadia Design Works had a really extensive team who had done projects well over 10 to $20 million in aviation fields. Um, and also had energy engineers, FAA consultants, a, a very wide, and I think it was Haley, not Haley Ward. It was Haley Ward. Um, as the engineer who obviously has a very good track record in general, but also in town. Uh, AVS Engineering, um, certainly a reputable company, uh, but did not have anywhere near the same level of capacity in terms of their team. It was a very small team that didn't seem to have had any, had any experience in larger projects like this. Um, demonstrated understanding of Millinocket, I think is fairly straightforward as well. Um, Arcadia Design Works has a long history as well, working in town and understanding the needs of the community. Um, energy efficiency, again, goes to Arcadia Design Works, uh, partly because of their team, uh, but also their proposals on what they saw um, as being the energy system for the building, which AVS Engineering did not um, submit anything to. And, and who did the assessment? That was the committee. These members of the same building. Yes, we all voted on it. These are the averages. Any other council comments? Yes, council Medor. Council Pray, with me, well, there may seem to be a uh, wide gap between the two bids as far as the price is concerned. 
I think adding in the fact that the architecture, the engineering, the FAA uh, work, and all that is all included in uh, Acadia Design's uh, Design Works proposal. And the fact that they have already done uh, the preliminary designs for the building and layout, uh, I thought gave them a, a high uh, level of, of expertise and advancement in the project. Uh, I wouldn't have to re-go over uh, or reintroduce uh, aspects or considerations that had already been talked about. So I thought it would move the project along faster, plus the fact that I think in the long run, we're going to end up saving money going this way because we won't have necessarily uh, the other one having to go ahead and subcontract uh, consultants in to work on this project. It's all inclusive in uh, the design, uh, Katie uh, Design Works proposal. So that's why we can chose them as uh, to move forward to this. Mr. Chairman, if I may. Uh, Thank you, Councilor, Councilor Frank. Yes. Medor, um, in the, obviously in the consideration of that, <coughs> a, a proposal was submitted to the two companies. And one company used the, the blueprint plans that they had already prepared and the other one did not use that to make their bid? Uh, to be clear, those plans were available to everyone. They so were... there wouldn't be a necessity to go back and read. The other company would have to do a different set of plans because they used that those set of plans to do, to already consider it. Because you, you made the argument or I perceived the argument to be that they would have had to then go out and redo plans and so forth, which is already included in this bit, even though it's costing us more because they've already done it. No, uh, maybe I didn't phrase it properly, but in the preliminary designs that were done, uh, a lot of questions were asked, a, a lot of discussion took place and a lot of uh, um, things that were uh, put in or taken out to best utilize the facility as the committee thought. And those would have to be readdressed, I believe, on a, with another company moving forward to start those talks again so that they would be brought up to the same uh, speed as far as the committee's considerations uh, for the plans that were already there. And I believe your question was about hiring additional consultants. Was that what you were asking to what Councilor Medora said? No, it was in reference. I was interpreting what I thought I'd heard okay. in his comments that the second company that had the lower bid would have to go out and redo some of this work, which would then add on to it would be additional cost over and above what we had had for a bid. Not necessarily add to the additional cost, but set the project back in time to have to be re, re examined and reiterated. Thank you. Where are you pointing to? Jeff? <laughs> Well, if you want to speak to this, please, yeah. Yes. Having been, uh, Jeff Mandela, and having been involved in these grants and these types of situations for the last 15 years um, on your behalf, um, sometimes when a bid seems unrealistic, it most likely is. Um, Acadia Design Works bid, after all the discussion and all the um, analyzation of the people involved in the group, in the committee, um, it was determined that that was the most realistic bid for the scope of the project that we're trying to do. So I think that if you take the lower bid, uh, if that was the decision, then it would create more problems moving forward. We've dealt with low bidder situations before and it becomes a real headache when they can't perform the task that's being asked, if that's clear enough. Councilor Trey. My only comment would be that it would sound to me as if the second company wasn't a qualified bidder in the first place then. There are, so as it is included in here, there are actually three bidders 
we determined one of them was not we determined one of them was not qualified. <laughs> AVS is qualified in the sense that they are an engineering firm that were responding directly to our request. Um, the other bid that we determined was not qualified was not responding to our request. They were, were responding to a conceptual design, which is not what we were looking for. So that left these two uh, who are responding directly to our request. And in that sense, this one was qualified, but determined that uh, the scope of the, the project was too large for them uh, and that their team didn't really have the capacity to do it. Any other council comment? That of the public? Jeff? Jeff Campbell, airport manager. Um, I will tell you that the players involved with the recommendation here are have extensive knowledge of what we're trying to do. They re they really can't handle what we're, what we're at. Thank you, Jeff. Any other public comment? And seeing none, back to the council. All those in favor, Councillor Pelletier. That was an aye, Councillor McEwen. Aye. 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 Councilor Pray. Pass. Councilor Danforth. Aye. Chair Gulley by Councilor Medor. Aye. Councilor Bragdon. Aye. And Councilor Pray. <laughs> yes. What a great response. Uh, passes 7 0. And Councilor Danforth, order number 89, 2022, please. That's order number 89, that's 2022, providing for approval of an application for Mall Venus and Spiritual Liquor License for Hillcrest Golf Club. It is ordered that the attached application for Mall Venus and Spiritual Liquor License is hereby approved for a Hillcrest Golf Club. One Golf Course Road, Millinocket, doing business as Hillcrest Golf Club. One Golf Course Road, Millinocket. Second. Motion by Councilor Danforth, seconded by Councilor Medora. Discussion of the Council? And seeing none, that of the public. Also seeing none, back to the Council. All those in favor, Councilor Bragdon? Aye. Councilor Medora? Aye. Chair Gulley, by Councilor Danforth? Aye. Councilor Cray? Aye. Councilor Pelletier? Councilor McEwen? Aye. Order passes 7 0. Aye. <laughs> Uh, that brings us to reports and communications. The Warren Committee for the May 12th Council meeting will be myself and Council Bragdon. If you're good with that, Council Bragdon. All righty. Uh, any chair committee reports? Council Danforth. Uh, I don't have a report um, per se, but you will be receiving an email from me prior to our next coalition, not coalition meeting. Yeah, where am I today? <laughs> the next council meeting with a finalized action plan for your review before uh, from the age friendly committee. I had promised to have it for this meeting and I did not fulfill that promise, but I promise it. Thank you, Council Danforth. Any other chair committee reports? And seeing none. Uh, that moves us to our two minute public comment. Anyone from the public have a comment? Cody? I'll do it right this time. Cody McEwen, 81 Bowdoin Street. Um, I may have opened my mouth a little bit too soon. Probably wouldn't have been the first time I've done that. But um, last weekend when I uh, mentioned the Trails End Festival, um, the committee since then has had to make a change to the date of the festival. Um, some very important logistical concerns were brought up, so we needed to make a change. But this is the official date of the Trails End Festival this year, 2022. It's gonna be the 16th, 17th, 18th of September. And get ready for some fun. You'll see some more communications out, like I mentioned before, but we did have to make a date change and it will be September 16th, 17th and 18th, Friday, Saturday and Sunday this year, so thank you. Thank you, Cody. Any other public comment? Yes, please. You want to come to the podium? Heidi Wheaton, 177 Central Street. Not sure if this is the end of the meeting, but I did want to come tonight. I have two requests on behalf of 
Well, we're trying to correlate and uh, coordinate our efforts with Penobscot Cares. I'm not sure if you all are aware of that group, but we are looking at the ARPA funds money and we're looking at the 20 million from Bangor area currently and trying to look at our resources to combine efforts and see what we can do to uh, really focus on affordable housing and Millinocket being my passion area. Um, I have suggested that perhaps if the council could consider whether or not the town could be an agent for monies that we would receive in grant monies to be distributed for affordable housing and whether or not the town itself would consider donating land for that affordable housing to be overseen in a, a very structured manner, including uh, a detox facility. So we're talking about probably over a million dollars with properties purchased in this area that might meet the need or to be able to be rehabbed, refurbished in the town, as well as any that the town might want to donate for properties that or for land that would be um, doable for a housing project or tiny houses or uh, family um, subsidized housing, things of that nature for individuals uh, that are strong in their recovery in Millinocket and uh, for the benefit of everyone that we continue to lose from this addiction issue in Penobscot County, we are the highest county. And I believe that Millinocket is probably one of the highest rates of overdose. And so uh, I think we need to throw our hat in the ring and see what we can do as a town to offer these services on a much higher level. Thank you. Thank you, Heidi, for your efforts on this. Um, I think it would be helpful for the council to see a, a proposal written out, kind of what you're looking to do, the volume of money that you're seeing and where it would come from. Um, when it comes to the town donating lands, I know in the uh, one of the committees we were discussing putting out an RFP uh, for some of the town owned lands to see what interest there might be from either developers or people like yourself uh, who wanna use it for a specific purpose that might help uh, the council kind of take a look at the broader spectrum of interest and see what we might want to use specific pieces of property for. Um, but I'm not speaking on behalf of the council saying that, I'm just telling you what we're doing in the community, uh, in the committee, excuse me. But if you want to bring a proposal to the council that we can look at um, exactly what you're trying to accomplish, I know that we'd be very open to looking at that. And thank you for addressing that important issue. Any other public comment? Peter? I um, <clears throat> just want to reference a date that came up in my conversation with Heidi um, yesterday. Um, the, I believe that the due date for that grant funding sheet is 15th of the next month. Uh, Take the council action. We'll be looking for, um, we'll be looking at a time crunch there. Just wanted to bring light to that. Thank you. And the next council meeting is May the 12th. 12th. So, understanding that timeline, if you could get us a proposal in the very near future that we have enough time to interpret and maybe ask questions ahead of the meeting, that would be helpful. Any other public comment, Matt? Mike Teller had his hand raised. Go ahead, Mike. Sorry, I didn't see your hand there. Uh, yes, my name is uh, Michael Teller. I'm from Bangor, Maine. Uh, I have a nonprofit down here, Bangor Friends of Affordable Housing. Uh, the main gist of the nonprofit here is it's a housing uh, crunch across the country, actually. And the group that uh, Heidi referred to, which I am a member of, Penobscot County Cares uh, is uh, trying to get the county, which is getting in $30 million, to address the issues of mental health, uh, drug addiction, and housing. And talking to the grant writers uh, at Penobscot County, the more cooperation and collaboration between uh, services and communities uh, increase the likelihood of uh, the requests being funded. 
but the need right now is to have somebody to work as a fiscal agent uh, or physical sponsor. And I think that's some of uh, what Millinocket might be able to provide for the county uh, to help the uh, efforts that are going into the Millinocket area to uh, improve the situation and also uh, bring in some of the workforce that uh, uh, Millinocket may be needing in the future. So uh, appreciate you considering uh, the possibility of becoming a fiscal agent. Like you say, uh, that decision has to be made by uh, your next council meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Much appreciated. Any other public comment? Well, thank you to all those who uh, came to this very long meeting and especially those who stuck out the uh, entire meeting. Uh, definitely a long one. And with that, seeking a motion to adjourn. Hello. <laughs> Don't be too eager. Motion by Councilor Medora, seconded by Councilor Braggin. All those in favor, Councilor McEwen. Aye. Councilor Pelletier is very much an aye there. Councilor Prey. Aye. Councilor Danforth. Aye. Councilor Braggin. Aye. Chair Goley. Aye. Aye. We are adjourned.